Hello there, welcome back to my channel. So in the previous video, I managed to install Arch Linux for the first time in my life in a virtual machine. And today I want to get GNOME to run on it. So I want to have my graphical desktop environment. And as a preparation, I just read through the section of the wiki about this. And so I don't have to do that everything on the video. But other than that, I have no idea. I've never done this before. So yeah, let's see what, what's going to happen. I have set up the screen so that you can see the wiki as I'm uh, scrolling through it and reading from it. And uh, join me and follow along. So I'm going to start the virtual machine. Let's hope it still works as I intended or as I did, I set it up last time. Yeah, we're still here. Great, so we are still up and running. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is to add a proper user. So I can't be doing everything on the root user still. So I'm going to add another user called Misha. So, um, and I forgot what the, the what the command is to add the home directory. So I'll just go to the man pages uh man user add i actually oh i don't even have man pages okay um well let's let's start with updating so pacman syu and just getting all of the updates that we need apparently there is a kernel update So it's just running that for us. That's the thing with Arch Linux, it's the rolling release. So it's always um, just updating all the time, which is also the charm of it, of course. And that has been done successfully. So let's see. Uh, it can't be just man, right? Uh, Pac-Man man as man man db that's it uh, just do the default man db i think that's the correct uh, correct package so man pacman yeah now i have the manual pages again so man user add and i'm just going to look for the flag that adds the home deer which is d apparently but what's the flag with m i thought it was m g k scale no m that's it create home so create the user's home directory if it does not exist so the flag that i want is m so user add m Misha. Then if I switch to Misha and set the password, or if I go to CD, yeah, I have the home directory and I'm going to set the password. Oh, uh, the password now is empty oh okay i'll have to do it from the root apparently password misha okay so i have created a user with a home directory called misha now what i want to do is the edit the sudoers file um because I'm just going to check what the groups are. And I'm just going to check if it, if Arch uses the wheel group group. Get and group pipe wheel grab wheel. Yeah, there's the wheel group. So um 
sudo no i don't have to do sudo now user mod ag wheel misha groups misha okay so the user misha has the groups is added to the groups wheel and misha and now i'm going to check the sudoers file i'll have to install the vsudo command apparently or oh the sudo command is not installed even wow okay so before i do anything else i should just export um let's see pacman q i think that's the command so this is the advantage uh, that i've used uh, manjaro linux for a while uh, i think this is really handy because you already start working with the pacman package manager in manjaro and then switching to arch is a lot easier because you have remembered the flags so if you're sw considering switching to arch maybe manjaro is a sort of a good midway point uh, as i did so i'm just going to pacman pacman q so i'm going to list all the installed packages and i'm going to put that in a file called installed package and i'm going to put that in the home directory of misha Uh, I should pipe that, of course. Um, oh, so of course I, I'm half asleep here. I should be Pacman Q to home Misha slash installed packages. <laughs> Good morning. Okay. Um, and then ls home Misha. Now it has the file installed PGS. And apparently I have this in my root directory, so I'm just going to remove this file. So ls home Misha. Yeah, and there's a cat called a file called installed packages home Misha installed packages. So now I have a file with all of the installed packages that were there. And this is basically a vanilla install of Arch. I haven't installed anything else other than Vim and Network Manager and NeoFetch. And um, the, it's going to be fun to diff these files later and see how many packages are actually installed. Um, so I've added a user. I've added him. I've given him a password. And I want to make him to give him sudo writes, but apparently the command sudo is not even installed. So is it just pacman s sudo? Yeah, apparently that's a package. I never knew that sudo was actually a package. I thought it was just a kernel thing. So now if I do sudo cat etc hosts. Yeah, I can I can do I can do the sudo command. So is that enough to do vi sudo? No editor found. Um, editor path is user bin vi. Have I is in vi not installed? Uh, Pacman Pacman s vi. Wow, VI wasn't even installed. So now vsudo, here we go. Now it's here. Now I'm editing the sudo configuration file. Must be edited with the vsudo command as root. Failure to use vsudo may result in syntax or file permission errors. So this is really important. And I'm looking for here uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command this is what i want okay so now members of the group wheel should be able to execute any command i.e the user misha should be able to com execute any command so i'm going to exit this
switch to the user Misha. And now if I do sudo, uh, yeah, anything, cat, etc hosts, we trust you have received the usual lecture from the local system administrator. That's me. And then the password. All right, great. So the user Misha now has uh, pseudo rights. Great. And I have a home directory. Now, from here, I'm going to set up my GNOME environment. And in order to run GNOME, I need to have a the display display driver. The default is Wayland, but what I I'm I, I I'm actually running an Nvidia card on my on my machine, unfortunately. In the in a virtual machine, it's not going to be a problem, but or uh, because I'll I'll be going for an X org setup on my machine, I'm going to just uh, practice with that. So I'm going to set up X org first, and it can be installed with the X org server package. So let's install that. Pacman s X org server, and now I'm on my other users, so now I have to do sudo, sudo, and I'm going to install the xorg server. Okay. And for, I'm going to do now. I'll also need to install the um, graphics driver. So, just to check out what kind of driver this virtual machine is actually using, I will do this. Oh, let's see. Am I allowed to paste in here now? Um, Yeah, that needs to be set somewhere else. So, okay, let's do LSPCI V grab VGA. VGA compatible controller, VMware SVGA controller. Okay. Um, then in install an appropriate driver. You can search the package base for a complete list of open source video drivers. So Pacman SS XF86 video. So it has AMD GPU, ATI, ATI video, dummy video, frame buffer, NVIDIA cards. So what would I use for this here it says an xorg vmware video driver um intel frame buffer i have no idea which one to install so let's google that xorg driver virtual box How to install Xorg inside VirtualBox guest. Okay. Install the full Xorg plus VirtualBox support. You might have to reboot after that. Okay. So Let's see, what did I install? I installed Xorg server. So I have to install the full package, pacman s Xorg virtual box guest utils. And I have to remember to do that as root.
There are 48 members in the group XORG. Enter a selection, default all. Okay, let's just do all. Okay, install. Okay, now let's see uh, if you cannot find a specific driver. Uh -huh. Okay, that should be okay, because this is the sort of the overview of the drivers that you want to get if you have an AMD, GPU, Intel or Nvidia. Um, Okay, running. The XOR command is usually not run directly. Instead, the X server is started with either Display Manager or X in it. So typically you will need to install a Window Manager or Desktop environment. And Arch applies default configuration files and no extra configuration is necessary for most setups. So GNOME is a really standard setup. So I'm just going to assume I don't have to set anything else for xorg. So now the next step is to install GNOME, I think, because uh, GNOME on xorg will install, let's see, starting. GNOME can be started either graphically with a display manager or manually from the console. The display manager included in GNOME is GDM. So, you know what, I'm just going to try and install GNOME and see if that works. So, installation, two groups are available. GNOME contains the base GNOME desktop and a subset of well-integrated integ integrations. And that's what I'll get. So I'll just try to install sudo pacman as gnome. And I'll enter all of those. I want all of the defaults. Okay, so this is getting to a okay, total download size. Oh, it's actually 2000 megabytes because it also installs a lot of uh, other extra packages and software. So let's see what that uh, brings us. So just gonna install that and let that run. So the reason why I'm doing this is because I thought that GNOME was really bloated on Manjaro. But now I'm starting, starting to have second thoughts and maybe GNOME itself has all of these extra packages coming with it. So yeah, let's see. Because that's what's putting me off when I first installed GNOME here. And I go to my overview, it has the clocks and cheese and all of that. VNC server, browser, document scanner, all of that stuff I don't really want. So I'm interested to see how the default GNOME install, how much it actually is. Yeah, sure, let's import that key. Uh, error, lame signature is marginal trust, is corrupted, var cache pacman lame. Okay, yeah, let's just delete that. Error, failed to commit transaction. Errors occurred, no packages were upgraded. Okay. Um, I don't really know what that means, but let's just roll with it. GNOME can be started either graphically with a display manager or manually from the console. 
graphically. If you install the GNOME group and want GNOME to start automatically automatically on the next boot, enable GDM service. You can then select the desired session, GNOME, GNOME Classic, or GNOME on Xorg from the Display Manager's session menu. If you prefer to start GNOME right away, start the aforementioned GDM service. Okay. Um, I will just enable the GDM service. So sudo systemctl enable gdm.service. Unit file gdm.service does not exist. Okay, so something went wrong here. Let's try again. What happens if I reinstall GNOME? Because something was wrong with those packages. So sudo pacman syu gnome. Install all default, default, default. So it really did not in upgrade any packages apparently. Uh, this virtual machine makes me scroll all the time, which is annoying. Check in package integrity. Error lame signature from David Runge is marginal trust. Do you want to delete it? No. No. Fail to commit transaction invalid or corrupted package. So apparently the lame package and the os3 package are corrupted so i want all check i'll have the normal one noto fonts that's fine five providers available for xdg portal implement I'll get default one. So this doesn't get any of this lame, uh, whatever it's called. So it's checking the package integrity. Okay, so let's do what every programmer or software engineer does. Let's Google it. Signature from David Runge is marginal trust. I haven't been able to update the system for almost a week now due to the error above. Okay, this was today wow okay this is on the arch forums and it's happening today and let's see i have to try this and this is pointing me to upgrade system regularly upgrading the system regularly via pacman upgrading packages prevents most signing errors if delay is unavoidable and system upgrade gets delayed for an extended period, manually sync the package database and upgrade the Arch Linux keyring package before system upgrade. Okay. Let's try that then. No. Back to the VM. No packages were upgraded. So upgrading the system regularly, that's that's what I already did. 
Pac-Man SYU. So let's try it one more time. Pseudo Pac-Man SYU. There is nothing to do. Okay. So then I'll try this. If delay is unavoidable and system gets delayed for an extended period, manually sync the package database and upgrade the Arch Linux key ring package. Okay, so Pac-Man SY, Arch Linux key ring, and Pac-Man SU. Okay, you cannot perform this operation unless you are root. Okay. So I did run it as sudo, but I'm just going to run it again as root just in case. So pacman sy arch linux keyring and pacman su. Okay, starting full upgrade, there is nothing to do. Pseudo Pacman SYU. Okay. And we're going back to my own user. And now we're going to try to install um, GNOME again. So sudo Pacman SYU GNOME. Get the defaults. And now it's checking the package integrity again. Oh, partition too full, not enough free disk space. Okay. Um, apparently I only have two gigabytes left. So let's see if we can fix that. Sudo shutdown now. And let's see, we have uh, our settings here. The storage is Arch Linux VDI. And can I change this? I should be able to make this bigger. Remove. Can I detach this? Remove attachment. And then attach. Arch Linux. I can choose that one. But can I? I should be able to make this bigger, right? Cancel. Uh, preferences. Don't tell me I don't. I've messed this up because I have too too little disk space. Storage. Dynamically allocated storage. Uh, so how do I make this bigger? Increase storage size virtual box. Use the virtual media manager in virtual box. Okay, why didn't I see that just now? Virtual Media Manager. Good morning. Here we go. 
properties, size, make that 30 gigabytes. Ah, oh, let's give it, f yeah, 30 gigabytes should be fine. Apply. Close, and I'm going to start again. But this does mean that we will have to increase our partition. So I'm going to log in as Misha. And LSV OK. Uh, so the, the, the machine is not recognizing it has so much the extra free space now. So I'll have to do F disk dev SDA three. Welcome to F disk. Pseudo I have to do that as root. This disk is currently in use. Repartitioning is probably a bad idea. It's recommended to unmount all file systems and swap off all partitions on this disk. Aha, so you can't do it as I mean it. Um, that means I'll have to boot again in the... Uh, okay. Quit, quit F disk. Okay. Now we are going to see if we can boot into the live environment. Uh, so I'll have to go to the settings, attach my Arch Linux CD and start that. Okay. Start the VM again. So now it's starting the GNU Grub. So now it's starting my Arch Linux from my disk, but how am I going to make it start into a live environment? How am I going to do that? Start from disk uh, from ESO virtual box. No, I don't want to do that in Windows, obviously. Um, hmm. Live CD DVD. Maybe if I check that, let's see if that works. Nope. Advanced options for Arch Linux. UFI firmware settings. Boot manager. Ah, here we go. VirtualBox CD-ROM. Ah, here we go. Arch Linux installed. That's what I wanted. Okay. So now we're booting the live environment from this disk. OK, 
okay arch iso that's fine lsblk what what is actually here yeah we have dev sda available um so do i have to no it does not have to be mounted obviously so i'll just do fdisk at dev sda3 this device contains ext4 signature and will be removed by write command Okay, let's quit because I think I have to do the actual device. Yeah, of course I'm I'm running F disk on an actual partition, but I have to run it on the device itself. So F disk dev SDA size mismatch will be corrected by write. Okay, so let's see. Um, print the partition table. And the size is now currently 5.5. Uh, I don't need to create a new table. But let's see, what is the command for changing a partition? Delete a partition, add a new partition, change a partition type uh, i don't want to add a new partition do i have to do it in the extra menu X, extra functionality, experts only. Expert command, M for help. Change partition name, change table length. Um... Let's see, can I do uh, F disk and large partition? How to resize a partition using F disk? Okay. Check the partition number you wish to delete. Uh, F disk resize partition without losing data. I want to resize a partition from a virtual machine without erasing any data. I only have access to this VM. Mm -hmm. Just F disk. Remove the existing partitions two and three. Recreate them with exactly the same starting numbers. Okay, so I have to actually delete the partition and then recreate it. Okay, I'm taking a big risk here. So let's just see. <laughs> uh, Return to the main menu, how to add a new partition. Okay, I'm just going to delete a partition then. Uh, print dev sda3, I'm going to delete this partition. Okay, I'm taking a risk here, but I don't know what else to do. So delete, delete number three. Partition three has been deleted. Then create a new partition. 
add a new one. Number three, starting on this sector and add, putting it towards the end, create a Prashi 3 size of 27.8 gigabytes. Okay. Partition 3 contains an ext4 signature. Do you want to remove the signature? Um, Yeah. Removing or creating a partition doesn't remove a data or file system on a disk. It will only update the MBR GPT information. So run F disk and remove it. Create a larger one. Modern F disk could ask about wiping signatures. If it will say no, this is essential. Sp pay special attention on its start. It must begin at the exact same sector. Okay. Okay. So then we remove, we don't remove the signature and we write, we exit and write, write and exit escape the partition table has been altered and then we have to do the resize to fs resize to fs dev sda3 please run e2 fs check first okay so e2 fs ck f Dev SDA three and then resize to FS. The file system is now four K blocks long. Okay, so we'll shut down. We remove the live CD storage remove okay and we boot up again and let's hope this works okay at least the boot partition still works now let's see if the root does still works oh my god it works misha password so moment of truth Oh, look at that. Available 24 gigabytes. It worked, guys. I did it. I actually manually resized the, resized, resized the partition. And I basically extend, I extended the disk. And then I resized the partition all by hand and a little Google foo. Great. Oh, that's a good feeling. That's a really good feeling. So now <laughs> we are back to being able to try and start uh, and install GNOME. So I, I love this. This is just so great. Like you make a challenge for yourself, you get all these problems along the way, but I'm, I'm learning so much. I'm practicing Linux. This is a really great way to learn Linux better than anything else I've done before. Apart from the things I do at work, of course. So sudo pacman. S Y U just in case there are updates. Gnome. Install all of those. Install that one, that one, and that one. And now it should go. Checking the package integrity. All right, now it's actually installing GNOME.
Okay, great. It seems that GNOME has been installed. So now I can try to enable the GNOME service again. So let's try it. Um, sudo systemctl enable gdm.service created symlink for the service. Okay. Now let's do a reboot and fingers crossed because if you install the GNOME group and want GNOME to start automatically, enable GDM service. You can then select the desired session. If you prefer to start GNOME right away, thereby avoiding a reboot, start the aforementioned GDM service from a graphically unoccupied TTY instead. Okay, well, let's just try and reboot and see what happens. Really? Oh my God. <laughs> hey, hey, look at that, guys. Wow. It worked. Full screen mode. Look at this. I have my Arch Linux GNOME session and it's running. That's incredible. I created this, guys. I did this all myself. And my virtual machine, actually, it's on this weird scaling mode. So let's uh, shut down, power off. So let's see if I can adjust this a little bit display uh I'm not gonna do the scale factor and enable 3ds okay so let's try that again and do it on full screen mode that's fine Looking better. Wow, that's really nice. I did it. I actually did it. I ran out of disk space. I couldn't install GNOME. And I solved that problem by manually partition, deleting the partition, extending it, and then installing GNOME. And now I have an, a, a graphical Arch Linux install. Wow. This is so satisfying. Look at this. And let's see, it did come with quite a few um, uh, I, I want to call it bloatware, but it's not actually bloatware. It's just a few extra programs, but it's a lot less than on the Manjaro install actually. And let's see, we have the terminal. Let's see if we still have internet. Yes, we do. And okay, so let's see if we can, can we make this bigger, for example? Resolution. Let's see if we can make, make this into an HD screen apply. Yep, that worked. And let's go for a 4K screen. Uh, no, that's not, f I said 4K. This, this is 2K, sorry. I am on a 1440 monitor. Keep the changes. Look at this, guys. Wow, I have a fully functional beautiful gnome session on arch linux on my computer this is this is just running in a virtual machine and look how smooth that works wow i'm i'm just i'm just 
so satisfied that I got this to work. And really, if you are learning Linux, I can really recommend this uh, experience of installing Arch with just nothing in it and trying to make an, a nice desktop environment for yourself and getting GNOME to run. And it is fairly easy if I didn't have to uh, install or extend this partition, I wouldn't have had so many problems. But now it, it, it's just so satisfying that I had all these problems and it, I fixed it and now it works and it looks beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm a GNOME fanboy, I really like it. And this is a really minimal setup. Um, let's just see. Oh, I don't even have HTOP. Uh, sudo pacman s htop so we are now currently using 630 megabytes of memory i hope you can see that there but that's what i have oh and i should probably stop the wiki now you, you don't need to see that anymore okay remove that you can't so you probably can't see um this can i can i adjust the size of this with uh, preferences I can't, I can't increase the size just for my, probably with because of the VM config and all of that. Um, system monitor. Does that even, oh yeah, look at that. That shows a little bit. So I'll, I'll just do it a little bit bigger again because the zoom is probably not very good. Uh, revert. I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. And yeah, this, this should be a bit more visible to you. So I'm now I'm using 930 uh, megabytes of uh, memory. I'm using, this is just a virtual CPU, so that's not very, very useful information, but just the 900 megabytes of memory, that's really nice. And now I can, from the GNOME, I should probably be able to start com um, customizing everything, downloading themes. So I like just make a little start with this, but uh, how can I do this? Appearance. Put it back in dark mode. I can add pictures. But does it have themes? GNOME has themes, right? Or do I need the GNOME tweaks for that? Probably. But anyway, like this is this is just fine for me for now. I am really not I'm really satisfied with how this looks already. And I'm just so so happy that I managed to install Arch Linux and have this sort of minimum mi very minimal install. And I think this is a good point to stop this video. But like I said, I can highly recommend this experience because um, from here I can start building my own operating system again. And uh, it just feels really good to do this from scratch. So highly recommend it. All right, thank you so much for watching. And in the next video, I'll start customizing my GNOME environment and running a few applications and yeah, making it my own. And when all of that has been, I'm going to be importing all of my terminal settings and things like that. And when I've gotten those things to work, I think the next step is to actually try it out on the, an old laptop that I have lying around. So thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.